Have you ever wondered what it's like to do drugs without actually having to do them? I have a solution for you. Watch Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Killer Clowns from Outer Space is a 1988 sci-fi horror comedy from the Kyoto Brothers. Not only is this one of the weirdest, goofiest movies ever made, but it is also, by far, one of the most creative. The movie opens with cranky Officer Mooney doing his rounds in the small college town of Crescent Cove. Over at the top of the world, a bunch of college kids are getting drunk and making out. Some of them are drinking beer, while others sip champagne while relaxing in an inflatable raft. What? The Terenzi brothers show up driving an ice cream truck and try to convince the crowd to buy some ice cream. So you don't want any ice cream? Well, you're not getting any! Ooh, wicked comeback. They thought they could lure in women with the promise of ice cream. Look, there's only one kind of woman you can lure in with ice cream. Ones who don't know not to look directly into the camera. I'll tell you, whenever I want to have a good time, I call Rich and Paul. A night out with those guys. Completely sucks ass. Mike and Debbie see a shooting star go by and they head out to investigate. Across town, an old farmer sees the same thing, but he thinks it's Haley's Comet. He goes inside to get some gear and this nice prop master hands him exactly what he needs. The farmer finds a circus tent in the middle of the forest. What in blue blazes the circus doing up in these parts? I can't get over his accent, gold darn it. While investigating the tent, the farmer runs into my worst fucking nightmare. Officer Mooney returns to the police station with a couple of guys he arrested. It sounds like they were on a date. We were just walking through the park on the way to the dorm. We had a bottle of wine. Yeah, it's a beautiful night. We were walking around. We didn't do nothing. Mooney gets into an argument with Dave, the other officer on duty. If instinct serve chief, correct? Uh-huh. Path lie that way. I'm not even Indian and I'm offended. Mike and Debbie also find the circus tent. They find the entrance and once inside, they see it is really weird. Mike proceeds to make really bad circus-related humor. He then says one of the worst lines I've ever heard in the history of ever. Guys, this place is great or what? It looks like it was decorated by Clowns R Us. They head through a door and end up in a matte painting. Well, at least they know where to send Obi-Wan to shut down the tractor beam. They realize the shooting star was really a UFO, and now they're inside of it. They head into another room with some giant wads of cotton candy. They see the cotton candy is filled with people. They get spotted by one of the clowns. It chases after them and shoots them with this heat-seeking popcorn. Another clown shows up and chases after Mike and Debbie with a balloon dog. Well, except here, where the dog disappears for some reason. This scene should give you nightmares. Mike and Debbie head to the police station to tell them what's going on, and Dave and Mooney don't believe them. Killer clowns from outer space. <sighs> Holy shit. The clowns head into town and start to shoot everyone with their cotton candy guns. Oh god, as if things weren't bad enough, now Rosie O'Donnell's in this movie. Dave drops Debbie off at her house, and he heads out with Mike to see the circus tent UFO. The tent is gone, but now there's this giant hole in the ground. He thinks Mike's lying, so he arrests him. Dave doesn't think that the giant crater is the least bit suspicious. One of the clowns runs into a biker gang that smashes his bike. The clown is so mad that he wants to fight. What are you gonna do? Knock my block off? <laughs> Why didn't he just pull down his zipper? Dave and Mike head to the top of the world where they see all the cars are empty except for this one Jeep which is full of cotton candy. Dave now believes Mike and sets him free. Back at the police station, Mooney is laughing at a gun magazine. He's getting calls about clowns abducting people in town. Hold on, this is a college town and they only have two cops? Debbie's taking a shower and some of the popcorn that was on her clothes is coming to life. At a bus stop, a clown is putting on a shadow puppet show for some people there. Holy shit! Mike tries to run the clown over but misses. Not sure why the police car turns into a toy remote control car. Mike sees the Terenzi brothers and joins them while Dave goes back to the police station. One of the clowns shows up at the police station and Mooney tries to arrest it, but it kills him. Dave shows up at the station and the clown made a dummy out of Mooney. Hey, nice foreshadowing. Make a dummy out of yourself. But you're not gonna make a dummy out of me. Ugh, I don't want to even think of where his hand is. Dave shoots the clown in the nose and kills it. The clowns are driving through town sucking up people in this giant vacuum. Debbie gets attacked by one of the clown offspring, and how did they get into the medicine cabinet? 
she runs into the living room and they capture her in this yellow balloon thing. Mike and the Terenzi brothers see Debbie has been kidnapped and they chase after them to this amusement park. The clowns run into a security guard so they kill him with acetic pies. Mike, Dave, and the Terenzi brothers head into the circus tent to look for Debbie. The Terenzi brothers get separated from Mike and Dave and run into some clown women. This movie just got a whole lot creepier. Mike and Dave head to the cotton candy chamber to see that it's almost full. One of the clowns enters the room, so they hide. So it turns out that the cotton candy cocoon melts humans into Kool-Aid and then the clowns drink it. Cotton candy is people! Disgusting, but that is the greatest silly straw I've ever seen. Mike and Dave rescue Debbie. I guess she repaired her sweater while she was in the balloon. The clowns chase after them and Dave kills a few. They escape through this messed up funhouse until they get trapped in this giant room. The Terenzi brothers drive through the wall and distract the clowns. How the hell did these guys know where to go? And did they have sex with the clown girls? Ew. They almost escape, but Clownzilla shows up. Mike, Debbie, and Dave get away, but it kills the Terenzi brothers. Dave distracts Clownzilla so Mike and Debbie can escape. The big top starts to fly away, and they really like this shot of this dopey cop. Dave stabs Clownzilla in the nose, and it explodes along with the ship. The clown car lands, and in it is Dave and the Terenzi brothers. Debris starts to fall out of the sky, and Mike, Debbie, and Dave are all hit with pies. If these are the same pies as earlier, does it mean that the movie ends with them all being killed? The Kyoto brothers, Charles, Edward, and Stephen, wanted to make a monster movie about the thing that creeped them out the most. Clowns. They had a conversation once about the scariest thing you could ever see. They decided the creepiest thing ever would be driving down a street and seeing a clown next to you that wasn't driving anything. That conversation became the inspiration for the movie. The movie was shot in Santa Cruz, California in six weeks for about $2 million. The original title of the movie was simply Killer Clowns, but they added the From Outer Space so people wouldn't think it was a slasher. The basic structure of the film is the blob, especially in the beginning. A bunch of kids are making out and they see a shooting star. An old guy and his dog investigate and get killed. And there's plenty other similarities as well. The kid in the beginning of the film buying beer is a young Christopher Titus in his first role. The clown that squirts Mooney in the face is played by Brett Leonard, who went on to direct The Lawnmower Man, Virtuosity, and a personal favorite of mine, Feed. The pyrotechnician for the film was Joe Viscosal, who went on to be the guy who created the amazing explosions in Independence Day. In another connection to The Blob, in the same year as Killer Clowns, Viscosal was also the pyrotechnician for the remake of The Blob. When I first saw this film on cable, there were a few scenes that weren't in the theatrical version. There's this one where Debbie explains her fear of clowns and this extended escape sequence from the clown ship. The director, Stephen Kyoto, said that there was this sort of director's cut that went to the cable stations, but he prefers the movie without them. He said the explanation scene just slows the movie down, and for the escape sequence, the FX weren't finished so they don't look right. In a scene where a car gets driven off an embankment, it was supposed to go really far, but a screw-up stopped it. There was a sandbag under the tire and a wire connected to the front of the car. One of the crew forgot to remove the sandbag, so when they pulled the wire, it snapped, and the car just sort of fumbled down the hill. They were on such a tight budget that they couldn't afford to reshoot the scene. When the clowns were killed, it was a composite shot of a spinning column of mirrors, and they added the sparks and effects in post. Toward the end of the movie, when all the clowns were being killed, they couldn't afford to do this shot over and over again, so they just showed the explosion of popcorn. In the original ending of the film, Dave was killed, but the Terenzi brothers survived. After some discussion, they decided to reshoot the ending to have Dave survive to give the film a little bit more of an upbeat ending. Funny that it's an upbeat ending because Dave survived, but what about the hundreds of innocent town folk that died when the ship exploded? The song Killer Clowns from Outer Space was written long before the movie was finished. The Kyotos contacted the punk band The Dickies, who liked the concept so much that they wanted to write the song for the movie. This movie is a huge accomplishment. They take a very silly premise and make it work so well. I mean, everyone's seen an alien invasion movie, but how many of you have seen a movie where the aliens are actually clowns? And not just any clowns, but really, really creepy looking ones. I'll even go so far as to say they give Pennywise a run for his money. This movie is an example of how creativity can overcome budget limitations. Many of the props were simple things that could be bought at a thrift store. Christmas lights, plastic tubes, rubber balls, funnels. It all works so well. 
The script was great, and I love the fact that no matter how ridiculous things got, they still played it straight, which is a huge part as to why the movie worked. John Vernon was hilarious as Officer Mooney, and he added the right amount of stubborn old cop to the role. I know you, you little fart. You hang out with the Terenzi brothers. The clowns themselves looked incredible. Here we are 24 years later, and they look just as good as they did back in 88. In the beginning of the year, the Kyoto brothers announced that they were finally going to make a sequel to the movie. They announced it as part reboot and part sequel, and it should be ready just in time for the movie's 25th anniversary. Given what they were able to do back then, I can't wait to see what the Kyoto brothers have in store for us now. All right, and action. action. 